Hey guys, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today I have an update for you regarding AMD's upcoming Ryzen 5 CPUs that they are announcing, well, right now. Uh, there are just basic details given in this press release, and I have put a few questions to AMD, but they weren't keen to answer all of them. I assume they want to keep some things a secret for when the Ryzen 5 CPUs are officially launched. Uh, therefore, it looks like today AMD are really just announcing the actual Ryzen 5 models, so the model names, uh, and their out-of-the-box specifications, as well as the all-important pricing. So right away AMD made it clear that the Ryzen 5 series will be targeting the sub $300 US CPU market, so no surprises there. They wanted to explain that twice as many people purchase CPUs within this price range, and again that's not really surprising. AMD believes that Ryzen 5 will shake up this market segment though by offering a better price to performance ratio than their competitor for gamers and content creators. And I have to say I agree with them because Ryzen 5 will feature both 6 core and 4 core parts featuring SMT support. Sitting at the head of the Ryzen 5 family will be the 1600X, which boasts 6 cores and 12 threads. The same configuration as Intel's Core i7-6800K. It will operate at a base clock speed of 3.6GHz and a boost clock of 4GHz. Of course, like all Ryzen CPUs, it's unlocked, though given what we've seen from Ryzen 7, I don't imagine you'll be able to squeeze too much more out of this processor. AMD says that the 1600X will be almost 70% faster than the Core i5-7600K when measuring multi-threaded performance in Cinebench, though that's not totally surprising as it does have two more physical cores plus those six threads. Along with the 1600X, there will be a second 6-core part known simply as the 1600. Basically, the 1600 comes clocked 400 megahertz lower, but is again a completely unlocked part, so that shouldn't really matter. As is the case with the 1700X and 1700, it's likely that the 1600 will be a much better buy than the 1600X, though there is uh, less of a price gap between these two parts when compared to the Ryzen 7 models but I'll get to that shortly. Then we have the four core parts, which also support eight threads, the Ryzen 6 1500X and 1400. Interestingly, out of the box, these parts are clocked even lower. The 1500X operates at a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz with a boost clock of 3.7 gigahertz. Meanwhile, the 1400 runs at just 3.2 gigahertz and will only boost as high as 3.4 gigahertz out of the box. Of course, once again though, these are both unlocked parts, so hopefully they will be able to run on all cores at at least 4 GHz. For those wondering, the 1500X and 1600 will ship with the Wraith Spire cooler, while the 1400 comes with the smaller Wraith Stealth cooler. Now for pricing, the 1600X comes in at $250 US, which prices it alongside the Core i5-7600K. That said, we suspect that you will be better off buying the standard 1600, which costs $30 less at $220. Those wanting to spend less than $200 have the 1500X at $190 and the 1400 at $170. These quad-core parts are coming up against the locked Core i5s, as well as the more expensive Core i3s, such as the unlocked 7350K, which costs $170, and we know that to be fairly terrible value. So without even testing, we know that the Ryzen 5 1400 already has Intel's entire KB Lake Core i3 range begging for mercy, while the locked Core i5 models will be trembling in the corner trying not to draw any attention. So the 1400 really is going to be the superstar here, and if it can hit at least 4 GHz on all cores, then I think it's safe to say this is going to be 2017's best value sub $200 CPU. Until Ryzen 3 lands in the second half of the year, Intel's budget hero, the Pentium G4560, will remain safe and well in command of the sub $100 price point. Right, so that pretty much covers everything in the press deck. What AMD didn't cover though is how the CCX units within the Ryzen 5 processors will be configured and also the cache amount, so how that configuration will impact how much level 3 cache in particular the CPUs have on offer. They did confirm though when I asked if the Ryzen 5 CPUs were physically the same as the Ryzen 7, uh, with just certain cores slash threads disabled, and they said that yes, that is the case. So that means that the Ryzen 5 processors will have two CCX units under the hood, just as the Ryzen 7 models do. What isn't clear right now is how they will be configured. Perhaps someone else managed to get this information out of AMD, 
but at this point I haven't actually been able to get any solid information on how the CPUs will be configured. For now I'm guessing that the six core parts will feature one core disabled in each CCX rather than one fully enabled CCX with a second featuring two cores enabled. That said, the latter option might be better for gaming, though it would be a little odd for the level 3 cache. Speaking of cache, either scenario would see the 6 core parts still equipped with a total of 16 megabytes of level 3. Moving to the quad core parts, it makes sense that AMD simply shuts off an entire CCX, and this would be the optimal solution for gaming. I can't imagine they would keep both CCX units enabled with just two cores enabled in each CCX. Uh, that would see the quad core parts retain the full 16 megabyte level 3 cache, but the crosstalk between CCX units would likely hurt gaming performance. So in the end, I see the Ryzen 5 quad cores supporting an 8 megabyte level 3 cache, half that of the 6 core and 8 core parts. It's also still not clear whether or not the disabled cores in the Ryzen 5 parts will be physically disabled from the CCX, or if they're simply turned off in the micro code or the BIOS. This is always exciting stuff for enthusiasts, as it means in the future, once yields improve to the point where binning is more for product segmentation rather than physical defects, it could be possible to buy a 6 core or even the 4 core part and enable up to 8 cores with a little bit of tinkering. Just imagine 1800x performance for $700 US. Yeah, I know I'm dreaming and I'm just teasing you guys in the process, so I'm going to stop. So enough speculating and enough dreaming. It shouldn't be too long now till I have probably all four Ryzen 5 CPUs in hand and I can show you guys exactly what they're all about. So with that, I'm going to get back to benchmarking Ryzen 7. There's still plenty of work to be done on that front. I'm actually working on right now, and hopefully if I can work late enough tonight, I'll be able to wrap it up and get the video out tomorrow afternoon, a Windows 7 versus Windows 10 uh, Ryzen gaming performance comparison, because it's a bit of a hot topic now, and a lot of people are suggesting that Windows 7 gaming performance with Ryzen is a lot better than Windows 10. So I thought I'd look into that, test quite a few games and try and get to the bottom of it. So that should be pretty interesting. And then next week, I'm also on the sidelines working on another video, which will be Titan XP SLI testing at 4K, comparing Ryzen to some sort of Intel system, whether it's the 7700K or 6900K or both. We'll see how much time I get to do that, but it'll be at least one of them. And yeah, that should be pretty interesting to see how the Titan XP cards scale on both platforms. And the Titan XP, while they're still ridiculous or unrealistic cards because that $1,200 US price tag, the performance they produce now is more realistic. You can, you know, it's more obtainable now because we have the 1080 Ti cards, which are much cheaper though at $1,400 US for the pair. They're still not that wallet friendly, but I'm sure there'll be guys looking at buying them anyway. And it gives us an indication of how 4K gaming performance in the future might look on these platforms with more powerful graphics cards, but that's a whole nother thing because games could be better optimized for Ryzen and performance could change. But we'll look at the hero now. I'm rambling. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up before I keep going on because there are a lot more cool things that I could talk about that are upcoming on the channel, but you'll see those in due time. Anyway, that's all for now. I'm your host, Steve. Thanks for watching. Hope to catch you guys again real soon. Real soon? Real soon. Real soon.